Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. This week's game has us jumping back to Montreal, and I am playing my Locust God deck, and I keep it in with Shivan Reef, Kindred Discovery, Impact Tremors, Supreme Will, Tarnished Citadel, Island, and Is It Signet. Kevin is playing his Rune deck and keeps a hand with Wooded Bastion, Plains, Exploration, Survival of the Fittest, Recruiter of the Guard, Wood Elves, and Wall of Roots. Josh is playing his Reki, The History of Kamigawa, and keeps a hand with Warrenclex, Yeva Nature's Herald, Lifecrafter's Bestiary, Selvala Heart of the Wilds, Malira, Sylvan Outcast, and Two Forests. And lastly, Jameson is playing Edgar Markov and keeps a hand with a Swamp, a Mountain, Soren Lord of Innistrad, Care of Mind Eater, Captivating Vampire, Intangible Virtue, and Arakto's Signet. Also, did I mention we're playing Plane Chase? Well, we are, and we start off on Kessig. Kevin wins the die roll and starts us off. Kevin plays a Plains and rolls us out of Kessig. We hit the Astral Arena, and Kevin pays one to try and roll us off, but fails. I play an Island and pass turn. Josh plays a Forest and rolls for free, failing. He then rolls a Planar Chaos, having paid one, and the Field of Nothing takes two damage. Jameson plays a Swamp and rolls a Planar Chaos before paying one and failing to hit anything. Kevin plays a Wooded Bastion, and then casts a Wall of Roots. He then puts a minus one minus one counter on the wall to cast Exploration, and plays a Forest. Kevin then rolls twice, and fails to hit twice. I play an Island, and pass my turn. Josh plays a Forest, and rolls twice, hitting nothing. Jameson plays a Mountain, and casts a Rakto Signet. He then rolls, failing to hit anything, and passes turn. Kevin doesn't have a land for turn, and instead puts another minus one minus one counter on the wall, and taps two lands to cast a Wood Elves. He grabs a Tropical Island, and casts a Survival of the Fittest. I play a Tarnished Citadel, and roll a dice. I hit nothing, and pass to Josh. Josh plays a Forest, and uses his free roll. He then casts Lifecrafter's Bestiary, and Kevin responds while the spell is on the stack, putting another counter on the wall to use Survival, pitching Recruiter the Guard to go and find Sakura Tribe Elder. Jameson casts a Blood Artist, gaining a Vampire token from the Edgar Markov trigger. Josh then goads Jameson into rolling the dice, and Jameson rolls a Planar Chaos, and Kevin puts another counter on his wall to toss Green Warden of Marasa to go and find Karmic Guide with Survival of the Fittest. The Planar Chaos trigger then resolves, and four creatures die, triggering Blood Artist four times as they die. Jameson puts all the triggers on Josh, and then he pays one to roll, and passes turn. Kevin casts a Sakura Tribe Elder in his turn, and passes. I play a Shivan Reef, and pay two to cast Is It Signet. I then roll the die and hit Planar Chaos. Kevin then sacrifices his Sakura Tribe Elder to go and find a new pretty island, and I pass to Josh. Josh scries with the bestiary, dumping the card on the bottom of his library. He then plays a forest and whiffs on the roll. At the end of Josh's turn, Kevin dumps Venser with Survival of the Fittest to go and find Fairy Artisan and put it into his hand. Jameson pays to cast a Karu Mind Eater in his main phase, gaining another Vampire token. Jameson then gambles, rolling the dice to try and get off his plane, but hits nothing and passes turn. Kevin pays 4 in his main phase to cast a Fairy Artisan. With no lands to play, and even less of a reason to roll, Kevin passes turn. I cast a Thought Vessel in my turn, and have no lands to play, but also no creatures to lose, so I roll the die. I hit the Planar Chaos, and the Fairy Artisans and the Vampire Token fall victim to the plane. At the end of my turn, Josh attempts to flash in Nieva, which I stop with a Supreme Will. Josh scries once more and bottoms the card. He then plays a Forest, and rolls, but fails to hit. Josh then passes turn. Jameson is struggling to find his lands this game, but manages to roll us off the Astral Arena to Stensia, which is oddly fitting considering his commander. Jameson then pays 3 to cast a Captivating Vampire, and gains a token. He then moves to combat, swinging the Karu at Kevin. Kevin takes 2 and gives Jameson a card, while the Karu also gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, having hit Kevin. Kevin casts a Karmic Guide in his main phase to bring back the Green Warden of Marasa. The Warden in turn returns Fairy Artisan to Kevin's hand, and Kevin rolls the dice, but whiffs. I play an Izzet Guildgate for my land for turn, before paying 6 to cast the Locust God. Josh scries one, keeping the top card on top, and draws it before playing the Forest he drew. Josh then pays 3 to cast Riki, paying 1 to draw from his bestiary. Josh then pays 2 to cast Malira, drawing off the Riki trigger. Josh then rolls the Planar Die, but hits nothing and passes turn. Jameson plays a Snow-Covered Swamp for his land for turn, and pays 4 to cast Olivia Voldaren. This gives him another token from Edgar Markov, and Jameson rolls hitting nothing. Kevin has the Karmic Guide die on his upkeep, and draws and plays a Forest off the top. Kevin then casts Chromatic Lantern, followed by an Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing his Greed Warden of Marasa. He chooses to exile it as it dies, and returns the Karmic Guide to his hand. Kevin then goes into his library, and finds Duplicant with the Eldritch Evolution, and targets Jameson's Captivating Vampire. 
This prompts Jameson to at least get one activation out of it, and he taps five vampires to steal my Locust God. Kevin then rolls player in chaos and passes turn. I cast Impact Trevors in my main phase and Adjacent Archivist. This deals one to all of my opponents, and I roll before passing, but hit nothing. Josh plays a forest and casts Song of the Dryads on Olivia Vildaren. Josh then casts Silvala, paying the one for Bestiary to draw, and draws from a legendary card being cast thanks to Reki. Jameson then challenges Josh to attack him, and Josh passes turn. Jameson draws for turn, gaining an insect token. He then pays three to cast Coalition Relic he stole from Kevin, and casts an Intangible Virtue. Moving to combat, Jameson swings the Locust God, the Kiru Mind Eater, and his new insect token at Kevin for eight points of damage. Kevin has to give Jameson another card, and all of the creatures attacking get a plus one plus one counter when they hit Kevin. Kevin pays five to cast Karmic Guide again, and he returns Venser to bounce the Locust God back to my hand. I'm quite happy with this, and Kevin rolls Planar Chaos, giving all of his creatures the ability to tap to deal a point of damage to a player. Kevin's only tappable creature, Duplicant, pings Jameson for one. I play a Myriad Landscape, and pay six to recast the Locust God. Everyone then takes one, and I activate the Archivist. The highest hand is six, and we all discard our hand and draw six cards. This means that all of my opponents take six damage as my insects enter the battlefield, and I swing all six at Jameson. Jameson blocks one of them with his larger insect token, and takes five damage. This gives all of my insect tokens that survive a plus one plus one counter, and I pass to Josh. Josh scries the top card and puts it on the bottom. He then plays a forest, and casts Nature's Lore to find another forest. Josh then casts Hall of Triumph, naming green, and draws a card from the Reki trigger. Josh then rolls once, twice, and three times, failing to hit on all three. Jameson plays a Command Tower for his land drop, and casts a Blade of the Blood Chief. Jameson then taps the rest of his mana to cast Edgar Markov, which isn't a great sign for the rest of us. Jameson then moves to combat and swings everything at Josh. This triggers Edgar Markov, who puts a plus one plus one counter on all of Jameson's vampires when he swings. Josh then takes 18, five of which is from Commander, and exiles a card, giving it to Jameson. Jameson also gets to put a plus one plus one counter from Stencia on all of his creatures that hit. Kevin casts a Seedborn Muse in his first main phase, and tries to get us out of there. He fails unfortunately, and we're stuck in Stencia as he passes turn. I draw and get an Insect token, dealing one to everyone. I then play a Solver Falls, and cast Laboratory Maniac, dealing one more damage. I then activate Jace's Archivist, and Kevin acts with the ability on the stack to path to exile my commander. I then pay three to try and Dream Fracture the path, and Kevin flashes in Mystic Snake. The Locust God then gets exiled, and I go find a basic before we all wheel and draw five. Moving to combat, I swing five insects at Jameson for ten, and the new insect at Kevin for one. Jameson blocks one of my insects, taking only eight, and Kevin takes one. I then add a counter to each insect that connected, thanks to Stencia. I then roll Planar Chaos and re-roll before passing to Josh. On Josh's upkeep, he scries and bottoms the card. Josh then plays a Reliquary Tower and casts Asceticism. Josh then casts an Alhamret's Archive, drawing from the Reki trigger on the cast. Josh then tries to get us out of Stencia, but fails and passes turn. Jameson untaps and plays a Swamp. He then casts Stencia Masquerade, and then drops a Vampire Cutthroat, giving him another token. Jameson then casts Child of Night, getting another token, and equips the Kiro Mind Eater with the Blade of the Blood Chief. Jameson then swings everything at Kevin, and upticks all the counters on his vampire thanks to Edgar. Kevin puts one creature in front of the two vampire tokens, and vents her in front of Edgar Markov. Kevin then takes the hit from the insect token for four, and the Kiro Mind Eater for six. Kevin then exiles a card to Jameson, before Jameson gets to add more counters to the creatures that hit Kevin. Kevin plays a Command Tower, and casts a Rune before passing turn. For my turn, I activate the Archivist immediately after drawing, forcing everyone to pitch their hand and draw six. I then pay six to cast Inundate, and Kevin apparently has an issue with this. He decides to Void Slime it rather than have it deal with Jameson's board state, and with nothing else, I crack my Myriad Landscape before passing turn. Josh realizes at the end of turn that he should have drawn more cards because of the Archive, and we let it happen. Josh starts his turn with a grip full of cards, and plays a Force in his main phase. He then casts a Soul Ring, and casts Seasons Pass to return Genesis Wave, Vornclex, All is Dust, and Hero's Podium. Josh then casts All is Dust, and takes care of everything that isn't colorless, which I'm totally okay with. Jameson untaps for his turn, and plays a Cathedral of War. He then casts a Dark Imposter, getting a Vampire token. Jameson then equips the Blade onto the Imposter, and passes turn. At the end of turn, Kevin casts Cyclonic Rift Overloaded, and actually does return something to his own hand, the Coalition Relic that Jameson had stolen earlier. Kevin plays an Alchemist Refuge for his land for turn, and casts Coalition Relic. Kevin then rolls the Planar Die, and hits, having his Planeswalk to Jund. With nothing else, Kevin passes to me. I recast my Locust God in my main phase, dropping an island when I realize I haven't played a land while tapping out. With my commander resolving, I move to cast Telerian Winds, which Kevin responds to by activating his Alchemist Refuge to give his Gilded Drake Flash. 
He then casts the Drake and steals my Locust God because apparently I can't control my own commander, and I discard my hand and draw 6. I then pass turn. Josh recasts his Soul Ring, Life Crafter's Bestiary, Hall of Triumph, and Kevin tries to find the line of text on my commander that says the Locust God enters the battlefield under your opponent's control. We can't find it and decide it must be eroded online since it happened every time this game. Josh then casts Ovia Prashir, Sage Life Crafter. Josh then drops Miri Cat Warrior, who devours Avia in a horrific manner, gaining 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Jameson tempts Josh to roll, but he passes turn. Jameson plays a Mountain and recasts Rakdos Signet. Jameson then replays Dark Imposter, who gets a token before the spell resolves. Jameson then has the Dark Imposter devour the token, gaining 5 counters, and drops Blade of the Blood Chief and gears up the Imposter. Jameson then rolls for turn, hitting Planar Chaos, and gains two red 1-1 Goblin tokens. He then pays one to roll again, and we Planeswalk to Prov. Kevin draws for turn and gets an Insect token. He then casts a Green Sun Zenith where X is 4, and grabs Spike Weaver. This forces Kevin to not be allowed to attack, so he rolls and whiffs before passing turn. I play a Reliquary Tower for my turn, and pay 6 to cast Arjun. I then cast Preordain and put the cards in my hand on the bottom and draw 4. I then scry 2, putting both on the bottom and draw. I then cast Unsubstantiate to bounce Spike Weaver to Kevin's hand, but Kevin flashes in Restoration Angel, flickering the Spike Weaver instead. I then resolve the Arjun trigger, putting my hand on the bottom and drawing that many. Josh rolls in his main phase, hitting nothing, and plays a forest. He then taps out to cast a Genesis Wave where X is 12, and with the spell in the stack, Kevin activates Spike Weaver's ability to fog all combat damage this turn. Josh then starts flipping cards and hits a bunch of Forests, Ronus, Oath of Nyssa, Azusa Lost But Seeking, Nylea, and Jadit Ojenin of Eferva. Josh then resolves the Oath of Nyssa entering the battlefield trigger, revealing Omnath Locus of Mana. Jameson plays an Akum Refuge, gaining one life, and casts his own Soul Ring. I suggest he deals with all of this, but instead he decides to cast a Patron of the Bane. He resolves the Edgar Markov trigger to get a token first, and destroys Josh's Miri. Jameson then puts counters on his vampires, and one extra because of the Blade of the Blood Chief on the Imposter. Jameson then rolls twice, hitting nothing, and on his third roll hits Planar Chaos, gaining life based on his hand size, so two. Kevin puts a counter on the Relic and starts his turn. Kevin gets an Insect token when he draws, and plays a Planes in his main phase, removing the counter from the Relic. Kevin then casts Panharmonicon, and rolls to get us out of the plane, but fails. I play an Island, and cast my Whirlpool Warrior. I resolve the Arjun trigger first, putting my hand on the bottom and drawing that many, and then shuffle my hand in from the warriors enter the battlefield and draw that many. I then cast Opposition, and start rolling after resolving the Arjun trigger. My second roll has me hitting Planar Chaos, and I also gain 2 life. I then roll once more, and pass to Josh. At the end of my turn, Josh casts Beast Within targeting Kevin's Spike Weaver. Kevin activates the Locust God's ability, unfortunately he can't find a counter spell, and the Spike Weaver gets destroyed. Josh scries the top card to the bottom and plays a forest. Josh then rolls and misses and pays for an extra roll, hitting the planeswalk side. We walk to Orochi Colony, and Josh then casts a Boring Clex, which Kevin responds to by activating the Locust God's ability. He draws and discards, and Kevin gets another insect token. Josh then casts Surak, the Hunter Caller, followed by Polacronos, World Eater. Josh then resolves the hero's podium again, followed closely by Kamal, Fist of Krosa. At this point, Josh's creatures are all pretty massive due to pumping each other thanks to the podium, and Josh pumps them all once more with Kamal's ability. Moving to combat, Josh swings to kill Kevin and Jameson. I draw for turn and activate the Whirlpool Warrior to hopefully find a board wipe. I fail to hit anything relevant, and with Josh's board being big enough to kill me next turn, we scoop it up. Game review time. So, plane chase. Goodness gracious does it affect the game in really wild and unexpected ways. I think it was pretty cool to see Stencia, considering that Edgar Markov is supposedly from there, and it certainly didn't hurt Jameson's deck when he was able to get a bunch of counters on his vampires and his tokens. Jameson did seem like the likely winner early on, but unfortunately several board wipes and several bounces back to his hand basically set him back entirely. On the flip side, Kevin wasn't hurt too much by board wipes or the bounce spells, but unfortunately he didn't draw very well. Even with an active survival of the fittest, he was often having to go find cards that would get him lands in order just to play catch up with everyone else. Finally, once he was cut up, he didn't have survival anymore, and he was forced to rely on draws, and as a result, he didn't really find a lot of good enter the battlefield creatures, which his deck pretty much relies on. The Locust God did not do what I'd really wanted him to do, but that may be in part due to the fact that I didn't really control him for most of the game. It's like a lot of people who have been commenting on his videos have recently said, you can't just cast him on turn 6 and expect to win, you have to do it when you have ample mana up and be able to abuse him with wheels. 
I'm definitely going to take that lesson to heart and hopefully apply it to games moving forward. Josh's Reki History of Kamigawa deck was a real treat to see in action. I didn't even know he was a legendary creature, and half the cards Josh played in his deck I'd never really seen in action before. These are the kind of decks I love to see in EDH, because it forces the builder to basically think outside the box and run other cards. Josh really wanted to abuse his Reki triggers, so he had to run a lot of legendary creatures you might not necessarily see in EDH. It was also really fun to see Hero's Podium, a card from Theros that I always thought was kind of cool, but never have seen it in action. It acted as a pseudo coat of arms for Josh, and pretty much won in the game. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit my Patreon link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.